All right, biology students, we are in a brand new unit. This is unit four, where we talk about genetics. And the first lesson that we have in unit four, uh, we're going to focus on DNA and RNA, specifically the stru structure and function of these two nucleic acids. So DNA and RNA are not molecules that are new to you. We discussed these in unit one when we talked about macromolecules. So remember, there's four macromolecules, carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And so when we talked about that in unit one, I told you that we would spend an entire unit coming back and talking about DNA and RNA. So here we are. Um, and today we're going to talk about the structure and function of both of these nucleic acids. So let's start with the structure. So both DNA and RNA are made of three parts. We call these nucleotides. And if you'll look at the picture, um, both DNA and RNA do contain phosphate. Um, they both contain sugar, but the sugar is going to be different between the two. And then they both contain four what we call nitrogenous bases. So let's get into the nitty gritty of exactly what we mean by the nitrogenous base. Um, first, let's start with the sugar, though. So if we're if we're talking about DNA, um, we have the sugar deoxyribose. But if we're talking about RNA, uh, the sugar is going to be different and it's going to be ribose. So this is part of what gives the name to these nucleic acids. Both contain phosphate um, and then DNA is going to contain the nitrogenous base adenine. Um, we also can have thymine. We also have guanine in DNA and then cytosine in DNA. However, in RNA, we're going to have a uracil to replace thymine. So DNA is going to contain A, T, C, G, and then RNA, A, U, C, G. All right, now DNA is going to store genetic information, and it's going to use those sequences of nucleotides, specifically the A's, the T's, the C's, and the G's that we just discussed, um, to get that genetic information. And then it's going to take that genetic information, use it as instructions to make proteins. Remember when we talked about unit two, or in unit two, when we talked about the cell, I told you that the the whole purpose of the cell is to make proteins. And so um, we're going to look at how that's actually done in this genetics unit. You can think of DNA as like a recipe. Um, so the cell needs instructions for making proteins. And so that those instructions are going to be found in the form of DNA, which is found in the nucleus of the cell. So let's talk specifically about the function of DNA first. And then we will talk about the function of RNA and how they're similar and how they're different. All right, so make sure that you get in your notes uh, what DNA stands for. So first of all, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, um, and it gets that name from the sugar. Remember, DNA contains the sugar deoxyribose. Uh, now, its structure is different uh, than RNA structure because DNA structure has a double helix shape. So it's double-stranded, and I'll show you another picture in just a second. This will make more sense. Um, but it's double-stranded, and then it's kind of twisted. So we say that it has this double helix structure. Um, one more time, the, the sugar that's found in DNA is deoxyribose. And then the four nitrogenous bases include adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine. Um, and we usually abbreviate these ATCG. Also make sure that you put in your notes that DNA is found in the nucleus of eukaryotes. So remember from our cells unit, eukaryotes contain a nucleus, prokaryotes do not. So if we're talking about eukaryotes, then DNA is going to be found in the nucleus of those cells. And then just a fun fact, DNA in humans um, is 3 billion nucleotides long. Now, when we show representations in the form of illustrations and pictures and clip art, um, you're not going to see 3 billion nucleotides, but just understand that there are a lot of nucleotides that make up a strand of DNA. All right, so let's talk a little bit about RNA since we've talked about DNA. So RNA helps DNA um, to make proteins. And there's three types of RNA that we're going to talk about throughout the rest of the unit. So mRNA stands for messenger RNA, rRNA is going to stand for ribosomal RNA, and then tRNA is our transfer RNA. And we're going to come back in a future lesson where we talk about protein synthesis, um, how proteins, we're going to talk about how proteins are actually developed and made, um, and we're going to come back and revisit these three types of RNA. Now each type of RNA has its own job, um, so 
we'll come back and talk about specifically what each of these does. All right, so make sure that you get in your notes that RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. It is single-stranded. So remember, DNA was double-stranded. RNA is going to be single-stranded. It is made up of ribose. So DNA is made up of deoxyribose, and then RNA is made up of ribose. And then there are also four nitrogenous bases in RNA, but they are different than DNA. So adenine, cytosine, and guanine are the same nitrogenous bases in DNA and RNA, uh, but uracil is going to be different in RNA. Remember, uracil replaced thymine. Now, RNA, RNA can be found in the nucleus of the cell, just like DNA, um, but it can also be found in the cytoplasm of a cell. And let's go back to the structure of DNA. So we said earlier that DNA is made up of nucleotides, and these nucleotides link together to form uh, long chains. And remember, 3 billion of these in human DNA. Um, but these nitrogenous bases that are found in the middle, you can see in this illustration, um, they are going to bond together, um, and they are going to use what we call base pairing rules to know how to bond together to form that double helix shape. So let's talk about base pairing rules. What, what is it and how is it going to be, why is it going to be important to this unit? Um, so nitrogenous bases are going to always pair in a, in a specific way. So adenine will always pair with thymine and cytosine will always pair with guanine in DNA. Now in RNA, adenine will always pair with uracil and cytosine will always pair with guanine. So we call this base pairing rules, and you need to make sure that you have that in your notes and you know this. We're going to use it for the rest of the unit. Now, these two nitrogenous bases are going to pair together, um, and they are going to bond together via hydrogen bonds. Now, that's important because hydrogen bonds are weak. And so when we come back in our next lesson over DNA replication, we're going to revisit this, and I'm going to talk to you about how um, DNA splits. And um, it's easily, these nitrogenous bases are easily split because of these weak bonds that hold them together. All right, so one of the important things um, to keep in mind when we are talking about DNA is one side of a D, the DNA structure can be used to find the complementary side. So this is one of the things I'm going to ask you to do on worksheets, quizzes, tests. So I might give you one side of a DNA structure or the nitrogenous bases on one side of the DNA structure, and I'm going to ask you to come in and give me the complementary side. So remember, we're going to use base pairing rules. A always pairs with T, C always pairs with G. And I know this is DNA because I see that I have two sides. All right, so adenine will always pair with thymine. Cytosine will always pair with guanine. We have a T, so that's going to pair with A. C will pair with G. A will pair with T. Another A means it's going to pair with thymine. Cytosine with guanine. Thymine with adenine guanine with cytosine, and then thymine will pair with adenine. Okay, so just make sure that if I give you one side of a DNA strand, um, the nitrogenous bases, that you can give me the complementary side. Uh, this is a good illustration of how the structure of DNA sort of works. Um, so one more time, you have a structure of DNA here. I know this is DNA because I see two sides here. Um, you have what's called nucleotides. So nucleotides contain a phosphate, a sugar, and a nitrogenous base. So you can see how they're linked together here to form what's called the backbone of the DNA structure. And then these nitrogenous bases are joined together with hydrogen bonds. Um, so sometimes DNA, a DNA structure is compared to a ladder. Um, and now you can see why, because it looks very similar to uh, a ladder. And you can see here the nitrogenous bases are representative of the rungs of the ladder. Um, but in real life, DNA is twisted around itself and it forms a shape known as a double helix. Um, so double helix is the descriptive term that we give for the shape of the DNA structure. All right, so I want you to pause the video. If you're one of my students, you have this in your notes. If you're not, you might want to just kind of sketch this down, but it's important to be able to um, identify some things that are different between DNA and RNA. So pause the video now, 
fill out this chart, and then come back for the answer. All right, so hopefully you got this right. Check over your work. Um, DNA contains two strands. Remember, RNA only contains one strand. Uh, the sugars are different in DNA and RNA. So in DNA, we have deoxyribose, and then in RNA, we have just ribose. Um, there's four nitrogenous bases in both, but DNA contains adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, whereas RNA contains adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Um, the base pairing rules are similar between the two except for thymine and uracil. Uh, so adenine will always pair with thymine when we're talking about DNA, and cytosine will always pair with guanine. Uh, but if we're talking about RNA, adenine will pair with uracil. All right, if you're one of my students, I'm going to have you watch this video. Um, it was just kind of interesting because there is some controversy that s surrounds um, the discovery of DNA structure and who actually did discover um, DNA. So we'll watch that video if you're in my class. If you're not, I will see you in the next lesson where we talk about DNA replication.